Backdraft. I'm Chiz Chism. 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 Yahweh! Ciao, Fudgebackers. Ciao, Backdrafters. Welcome to Beer Boys Podcast. I'm Adam Creep and Chiz. And that's a Steve Creep coming in very quickly on the twos and the ones. Mmm. Mmm, yes. <laughs> well, Backdrafters, Hero Month is rolling on. That's right, I've dubbed February Hero Month because we're talking about firefighters all month. Real heroes. And the only real heroes out there are firefighters. The rest of those ACAB mother lovers can go to hell. That's right. It's ACAB, not AFAH. That means all firefighters are hunks. For? All firefighters are hunks. Ah, uh, not hung. No, 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 no. That's AFV. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. America's firefighter videos. That's a, that would, I'd watch that show firefighters getting hit in the dong yeah. by the hose. Mostly. The hose. And like pretending the hose is their dong and then like <laughs> several firefighters standing in a line with the hose as their dong. And yeah, yeah. It's 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 very repetitive, but like you get a laugh every time because it's your heroes doing that. Fast forwarding and reversing, going up and down the poles with that like doo, 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 doo. Exactly. that's a lot of it. Oh yeah, it's a lot of reversed <laughs> fireman footage where it looks like they're putting children back into burning buildings, and mm-hmm. yeah, it's hilarious. It's great. Dalmatians pooping in the park. Exactly, and then them not picking it up. That's yeah. let the police pick that up. That's a police issue. That's not a fireman issue. Yeah, wearing their uh, fighter men uh, gear. Exactly, and just laughing, watching these cops put on gloves and pick up their dog's poop. What a bunch of cucks the police are. Eat me, cops. That's right. <laughs> Who would host that? Rob Riggle? Yeah, Rob Riggle would be there. Uh, his partner in crime, um, Shay Guervo. Oh, I thought you were going to say, like, Shay 45. <laughs> Cole 45's there, too. <laughs> Mm-hmm. O.J. Simpson. Sure. Maybe O.J. Simpson and Rob Riggle. Hey, now that's the pairing I never thought I'd see, but now that I've heard of it, it's all I want out of life is a project starring Rob Riggle and O.J. Simpson. Great. Yeah, them commenting on something, maybe like a contest, like a knife-making contest. Sure, yeah, like a wipeout-style contest where uh, husbands push their wives into doing wipeout stunts or something. Maybe a god's version of Wipeout, like a lot of wraths and a lot of, uh, you know, spiders. Right, like the wrath you feel when you murder your wife and her lover, ex-wife and current lover. Yeah, first you have to murder your wife, and then you have to go through a series of events uh, to not drop into slime. Exactly, yeah. Get Casey... Casey Kasem or whatever his name was is with you during it. He's on your back. He's talking in your ear saying, hey, don't do it, Juice. But you're doing it. Everyone everyone gets called Juice on the show. And I don't know. The show could just be called Juice. Yeah. And there's a there's a lot of angels during the uh, course. Of course. A lot of angels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Angels on the wipeout track, I think, is what, uh, mm-hmm. is what it, you know, it could be called. That's not a bad name. Christian Wipeout just writes itself. Ooh, I like Christian Wipeout. That's good. Yeah, like, why aren't you giving us money, Pure Flex? Christian Wipeout? That You can have that one. We're not even going to charge you for that one. That's a freebie. But the next one is going to cost oh, you. I don't want him to have that one. No, to let him have Christian <laughs> Wipeout. It's fine. I know, I know it's the right thing to do. Yeah. I just don't want to do it. You know, and sometimes it's hard to do the right thing. And that's really the lesson for 1991's Backdraft. More leg front draft. Hey, got him. Because <laughs> it's the opposite of back. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's good. That's really good. Yeah, it's unexpected. Yeah. Hey, what? You, have you seen Backdraft before? I've never seen Backdraft before. And it's definitely one of those movies where you think you've never seen it, but you probably saw it a bunch on TV or something. Right, on TBS, but- yeah. I've never seen this movie ever. No, me neither. And uh, I uh, I was a little disappointed with it, I got to say. It was good. But it was fine. But I was, I guess in my head, I was like, oh, this is going to be like Roadhouse with firefighters. That's going to be awesome. It's going to be this like over-the-top, 
you know, kind of ridiculous firefighter movie. I, it had been sold to me that it ends with two firefighters fighting with axes, and I'm like, that's awesome. And then that's not what happens at the end, and I was like, well... All right, I was really looking forward to an axe fight in a burning building. It's kind of what I had my whole hopes on for this two and a half hour movie, but that's nah, fine. Ron Howard did his best. Well, I bet you it was this. Everybody was. It's the eighties. It's the late eighties nope, going into the nineties. Yeah, correct. Capitalism won. Yeah, that's correct. Ooh. Thank you, Reagan. Yeah. Everybody's got dirty beards and like getting over doing cocaine, <laughs> and I bet you that's exactly what the script was. And then nerdy little wiener Ron Howard comes in yeah. and puts his little gross slime over everything and makes a fine, competent movie. Makes a C yeah. plus of a firefighter movie. You had all the makings of a lethal weapon here for uh, fires, but uh, well, we'll get into it because I had a bit of a different take. Oh, well, I'm excited to hear your take. Before we get into any of our takes, of course, we need to do the pure boys prayer. Yeah, take this prayer. God, God bless, bless our, our podcast, podcast please. God, God bless all podcasts, please. please. We, we love, love you, please. Amen. I always forget if we right, are woman. first, if we're praising us first or them or or the all. Our. Yeah, yeah. us first. Us first, then all, and then we love you, please. We love you, please. But I mean, if blessings don't start at home, where do they start? Uh, the gut. In one word, what's this job about? The gut. <laughs> That's two words. I'm Robert De Niro. That's two words. Robert De Niro's in this flick. Bobby, Bobby F. and De Niro was shocked what? to see him in, in this movie. I think he thought he was the main character. <laughs> yeah, well, he kind of is, sort of. Well, he's a lurker. He's a creep. He he mm -hmm. plays the nerdy weirdo with boogers coming down his face. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I don't know why, but in my head, I always thought Tom Berenger was in this movie. And then I think I was just thinking of William Baldwin, who is also in this movie. But Tom Berenger's not in this movie, and that's such a disappointment to me. Is Tom Berenger the AFV guy? No, that's Tom Bergeron. Uh, Tom, Tom Berenger Bergeron. is a star of Sniper. And, like, a Chicago boy. He's from his all about Chicago. Yeah, it's about Chicago. Hey. There's a lot of uh, brick. Oh, yeah. A lot of brick, a lot of Chicago Bulls logos on firefighter helmets. That I mean, we were getting into peak Jordan era at that time. Everybody had uh, Bulls logos. What kind of uh, clay do you think they got down there to make that brick? <laughs> Probably red clay. Uh... A lot of iron oxide in that clay. Oh, yeah, because all the Chicago buildings and the deep dish pizza. It's probably the clay's red because of the pizza sauce. And they want it to look like the hot dog. <laughs> exactly. Why don't, hey, chief, why don't all our buildings look like hot dogs? And that way when they're on fire, it's like we're at a backyard barbecue. Is this a good Chicago accent? Honestly, I think it's better than we could hope for. All right. Well, hey, it's better than what anyone does in Backdraft. <laughs> you wanted more accents? Yeah, they're in Chicago. And every once in a while, hey, get a grab a thing. And then, hey, well, what's going on? I'm William Baldwin. Hey, yeah. I know. So that one, but I'm all. Right. Just do an accent. Kurt Russell does one at the start for a little bit, and then he dies. I would have liked an accent or two. I would have liked a story about a guy from Nolens, uh that came up, maybe as an old retired vet uh, veteran. Sure. That'll but other than that, you got to have some Chicagans. Got to have classic Chicagans. Well, not this it, movie, unfortunately. I haven't said my favorite uh, Chicago phrase yet, which is, is that your jacket? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's a really good phrase, yeah. Who'd you steal that from? That's from something, isn't it? Yeah, Lauren Lapkus. Oh, that's of, it. Of uh, the more famous stuff. <laughs> of more famous stuff. You understand. We'll get there. Lauren Lapkus of Jurassic World fame. Yeah, Jurassic Park, the original as well. <laughs> she was one of the trees. Exactly, yeah. And the she, banana. She played Tim of Tim and Lex fame. The banana. Mm -hmm. The talking banana, Tim. If you could play a fruit in Backdraft, this movie that we watched. Okay, yeah. Movie uh, full of fruit. What fruit would you be? Oh, my God. Uh, 
I guess, uh, would chestnuts count as a fruit? Because they go great roasted over an open fire. I don't know if chestnuts are a fruit or not, and I'm going to say they are. They, they are. grow on, like, a tree, a vine. Yeah, they're the nuts of a tree. Yeah, they're like the cranberries of uh, wood. Yeah, you know what doesn't grow on trees? Vegetables. So I think I think nuts are fruits. Yeah, nuts are fruits. Nuts are definitely fruits. Yeah. Bulls. <laughs> That's correct, yeah. Hey, uh, boy, before we get too far into Hero Month and talking about Backdraft, 1991's Backdraft, we, of course, need to get to a couple segments. So let's start with a very important question. And that is, of course, Steve Grape, whomst was the beggar Vance of FireproofMyMarriagePlease.com? Ah, it would definitely be the website FireproofMyMarriage.com. <laughs> A hundred percent. I thought it was fireproofmymarriageplease.com. Am I wrong about that? <laughs> we did that. Oh, we did that. I wonder if we could get that URL and make that... We could probably get that URL. Make that our Pure Boys website, fireproofmymarriageplease.com. Yeah, steal, steal the HTML from fireproofmymarriage.com. Fireproofmymarriage.com, please, dot com. Or we make it a store. <laughs> right, and that just sells hot sauce. Hot sauce, there was another thing, maybe a towel. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, like a fireproof towel. Yeah. Yeah. It's rubber. It's a rubber <laughs> mat. It's a rubber mat. You can have melt on you in a fire. It's unmeltable. That's right. You can't melt rubber in this economy. Jet fuel? Jet fuel definitely can't melt rubber in this economy. It should have made the towers out of rubber. <laughs> Hey, don't That's get too, next. yeah, don't get too ahead of yourself here, bud. We got lots of firefighter movies to talk about still. One lots more. of fire. We should just keep rolling with the firefighters. Uh, you you know I'm down. I love until me some firefighters. Yeah, until we end. <laughs> until cowgirl summer. <laughs> Dude, do you have a question for me or what? Eh? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so Adam. <laughs> The Baker Vance of fireproofyourmarriage.com. Oh, it's obviously fireproofyourmarriage.com, please.com. Of course. What else could it be? Was it going to be Kirk Cameron's anger issues? No, it's going to be fireproofyourmarriagepleased.com. Sell the hot sauce, you idiot. Yeah, you're leaving money on the table. Hot sauce is very hot right now. Pardon the expression. Yeah, you're leaving the sauce on the table. I, how how foolish do they feel that they didn't cap they they were got in they would have got in right ahead of the of the like uh, hot ones exactly and so they could have been on the cusp and they just blew it. There's a whole pepper society out there on YouTube that's just beyond me, but it it, it exists <laughs> and they want your holy sauce. Get please, please give us your holy fireproof my holy sauce, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> we're being nice. Yeah, we're being nice. We're not being rude about it. Fireproofmyberchplease.com. Sell me the sauce. How yeah. How many Scovilles do you think it's going to have? Oh, if it's anything like hot ones, it'll just be a bunch of question marks. TBD. <laughs> That's That drives me nuts on hot ones. The last so the last dab or whatever it's called. Scovilles TBD. It's like you've had this sauce for five years. Fire your Scoville guy, because he's not doing his job. He's leading you down the primrose path, guys. Yeah, all you have to do is go what's my Scoville.com and it tells you right away. Like why use the question mark? Exactly. Just go to what's my Scoville please dot com. <laughs> please should be in more URLs. You're genius. Yeah. I mean, is please.com taken? Probably it's probably yeah. a porno uh, site. Yeah. Almost definitely a porno site. Yeah. It's probably a site where you can hire escorts or something. Uh, it's probably like a blank site that just like steals your information if you put anything in it. <laughs> you type the letter H, it takes <laughs> all of your information. Well, I guess you can't use H anymore, you idiot. Sorry, we, we've disabled that key on your keyboard. We took H from you. Good luck writing ha 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 now. Now it's going to sound like <laughs> you're screaming. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, you got me, yeah. Well, uh, LOL, you look like a turd. So I guess <laughs> like now you have to look like a turd all the yeah. time when you're texting. Or no one can ever know that you're laughing. Well, uh, I guess L U L is pretty funny. Ha ha ha. Yeah, L U L Z. Roth Zed. Just bring back Rafflecopter. Yeah, Rafflecopter is good. Yeah. <laughs> is it? Lightning strikes. <laughs> yeah, lightning strike. Of course. Yeah, thunder rolls. Garth Brooks. Yes. Yes. Backdraft. Yeah, more like backdraft. Front draft. Yeah. 
<laughs> Great. Got, got them all. <laughs> Ah, uh, uh, <laughs> sorry. My wife is taking her cat outside, and I'm very distracted by that process. I love it. Yeah, put him in the fire. Put her in the backdraft. The backdraft. I was while I was watching this movie. I was subsequently building a fire in my home, and that was really fun. I felt like Kurt Russell doing that. Did you talk to the fire? Oh yeah, I kept calling it a son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> As you should. Keep it in check. People hate fire in this movie. <laughs> but they love driving to it. Oh, my God. It's it's so much fun being a firefighter. We're, For the first little while. We're yeah. so giddy about firemen that we can't. We're, we're, like, totally breaking the rules of the show. Yeah, we got to get to our segments. That's true. Well, before we get to that segment, I want to tell you a quick story that I wanted to tell you last week about my new favorite thing that I do at work that's completely unrelated to all this stuff, but I don't know where I'm going to squeeze it in. I, I don't want to forget it for next week, so... Give it to me, baby. All right. In my job, I do a lot of vacuuming. That's a big part of my job. Vacuuming. Vacuuming carpets. And I've started doing this thing where when I feel like I have to fart, I put the running vacuum to my butt, and then I fart right into the vacuum. And it makes me laugh every time I do it. And nobody's ever caught me, but it's very funny to me to just fart, to just suck a fart out of my bum with a vacuum. It's great. Now, do you want somebody to catch you? Is that like the ultimate? Yeah, that's how I nut. That's how I'm trying to nut. Is to get to have someone catch me sucking a fart out of my butt. Do you have to do anything to the vacuum to make this possible? Do you have to detach a hose? Yeah, well, yeah, I have to turn it on for one thing. Of course, but I'm assuming you have the vacuum uh, at the ready. You're not just like sweeping or doing something else. Right, and, and then, then I going run. At the back. Right, I, I pinch my butt cheeks together and waddle to my to where the vacuum is, and then suck a fart out of my butt. No, I I while I'm vacuuming, I'll oh, unhook the hose from the metal part, the sucker, and then I put the hose right on my butt, and then pfft, right into it, and it just just sucks it away, and it's now then it's gone, and then it's it's. Pfft, Disappeared into the ether. Well, it might be less gone than if you just farted into the ether. It's more there now that you've put it into a vacuum machine. I guess I am filling... I haven't opened the vacuum to change the bag since I started farting in it. Oof. So maybe one day when I ex change the bag, I'm going to just get... You know what? I'll report back. When I, I'm not going to do it tonight because I don't need to change the bag. I'm not going to waste a bag. But when I do eventually change the bag, if I get a face full of fart, I uh, will let you and the listeners know. This is absolutely not a one-and-done story. We need updates. We need progression. I need more characters. Maybe get, like, a like a recluse in there somehow or, like, a dirty old wino. Sure, yeah. Can I have a woman who loves pigeons be in there or something like that? Mm -hmm. a, um, a fricker. A Brenda Fricker, we'll say. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah all Brenda right. Brenda Fricker. Frick on at me. Put a fricker in there and, uh, put a, hey, put a fricker on it. Yeah, put a fricker in the oven and see if it blooms. <laughs> That's a beautiful expression. <laughs> I've heard it before. That's definitely not a original. Oh, well, you know what? I still appreciate it, and I appreciate you. Uh, it wasn't original. What am I talking about? Yeah, you know who else I appreciate? God. <laughs> yeah. That's Kevin true. Sorbo, yeah. Weed of the Week. And God. Kevin! And God. And Church. And California too, even. Even? Yeah, I hate California, but I love Kevin Sorbo and his tweets. And this one is a quick one. Constitutional carry. 2.46 p.m. I biffed the time. Uh, February 7th, 2023. 275,000 uh, tweet uh, oh, views. Sad, Kevin. The bots uh, the bots must have been disabled on Kev's account. That's a huge drop from the last week. He had like 2 million last week. But uh, I think it's because the bots love constitutional carry and they want it to just be swept under the rug. They don't want it to get big news. No, no. Was it was it a was there a picture that accompanied that? You said sometimes he tweets a lot of pictures and videos, so Nope, there, there's oh. nothing attached to it. There's a period at the end, which apparently uh, the new generation finds aggressive. Um, but Sure. Uh, yeah, constitutional carry period. 2.46 p.m., so middle of the noon. Good time to take it down. 
Hey, but he's he's got a diaper on. He's untethered from the toilet. I'm surprised there wasn't a picture of him like pointing a gun at a Subway employee or something like that. Or like putting a gun up to his own head while ordering Subway. I mean like constitutional carry. I can do this in public. It's fine. Well, the diaper makes them sane, and it's insane what they're doing with the technology of diapers nowadays. Mm. It barely even feels like you're wearing anything at all. Wow, that's sexy. Yeah, you can feel your dinger slap between your legs just like when you're wearing underwear. Hey, that's really cool. Do they, much like good underwear, do they have like now a dinger pouch in the front to like hold your balls and, and your garbage? There's a dinger pouch. It can be scented if you want. I do. Uh, mint, cherry, or uh, Buckley. Oh, Buckley's. Buckley's. Buckley's, please. Buckley's, please is what we're getting a lot. Yeah, that should have been Buckley's slogan. I don't know why it wasn't. Buckley's, please, said nobody ever. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. I, hey, I should be in advertising. I should be making Christian Wipeout and Buckley's, please. Advertising. Slogan. Yeah. Well, yes. Kev. Good luck with that. Constitutional carry. Yes, that is a thing. Correct. We stand that. He's also not saying what we should be carrying, so there's a open-ended question there that I forgot to bring up. Well, I know what Kevin's not carrying, and that's uh, a big load of poop in his guts. He definitely let that go, and now it's in his pants. I had a good one today. I, I don't mean to brag, but... Oh, well, uh, please. Oh, good, he got it. Hey, this is your show. If you want to brag about the poops you take, then I can't think of a better place for you to do it. Like, is there anything better at this age in life? No. No. The, taking a good poop is like, when you take a, like, a for, well, what's a good poop to you? What does that mean to you? Does that mean, a, like, a quick and easy wipe? Does that mean a big poop that you're like, wow, that's how big of a dinger I could take in my butt? That's crazy. That's such a big log. Or what is it? What does it mean to you? It had all of the super qualities of a great poop. It was an easy wiper. Love I it. barely even wiped. Love barely. It. Love it. Uh, it was a lot, and it felt good. Yeah. You, like, you feel skinnier after. Oh, that's the best feeling. Yeah. Yeah. It's and your stomach feels good, uh -huh. you know? Yeah, and you're, you kind of have a bit of pre, because it was yeah. stimulating your uh, whatever that's called, the male G-spot. Yeah. Or... yeah. What's that what thing you called? Call it? I'm calling it the male G spot. I don't know. What's it called? Yeah, it's the male G spot. But that's what a, it is. But there's a name for it. The thing that it is. Your prostate. Uh, that's what it is. Oh, is that the prostate? <clears throat> that's the G spot. Isn't it? I thought so. I thought it was in between your prostate and your areola. You know what? Uh, I've never had an O in my life. I've never, I don't know. So I don't know what it takes to get there. But. What it takes to have a good poo is everything, and I had mm -hmm. it this morning. And Congrats. That's why I'm so freaking, uh, you know, up. Did you text your wife about it? I didn't text my wife about it today, no. Usually I do, but, like, it's kind of uh, trod territory nowadays, so I'm trying to spice it up and right. not talk about my dumps. That's fair, yeah. Yeah, if you scroll back through you and your wife's text history, it's mostly just a one-sided conversation of you describing your dumps and her not responding. They all say red next to them, but nothing else. Dump this, dump that, dump it with a baseball bat. <laughs> exactly. Dump this, dump that, dump it with a baseball bat. <laughs> That's her mind when I'm texting her about yeah. uh, my dumps. It's like, oh, great, Steve Creeps texting me again. Dump this, dump that. Yeah, great. <laughs> baseball bat. Baseball bat. I need a yeah. shower now. Do you ever need a shower after we uh, record? I mean, I usually do take a shower after we record, but that's just the nature of the timeline of my day. That's Nature of the business. Yeah, and also, like, whenever we record, I always have a roaring fire going, and I'm sweating by the end. Like, I, the fire is always too hot by this point in the morning, and I'm always just like, why did I burn... S I shouldn't have burned that extra log today. It, it would have been fine if I stopped burning logs two hours ago. Oh, God, I'm s Laverne, I'm sizzling over here. Well, you gotta feed that fire, baby. It's a living thing. <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah, it breathes, it consumes, and it hates. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, does it hate. You know, and that it's lines like that that made me go like, yeah, this movie probably had a way better script originally. A way wackier, more over the top, way more, like, takes self seriously, but is ridiculous script. And then they just, like dulled it all down to make it a pretty milk toast movie about firefighters 
it's a little milk toasty. It it starts off with a bang. There's like yeah. five backdrafts in the first 15 minutes of this movie. They earn their name. They earn the name for sure. It, this movie has my favorite feature in movies where people say the name of the movie. And because it's about backdrafts, people say backdraft constantly. It gets the people going. I, I don't know what it is about Backdraft. It, it's two words that are one word that just go together. Exactly, yeah. Well, and, you know, uh, I think I woke my wife up this morning from me going, Oh, they, they, oh, they said it! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I, I did keep saying it because every time there was an actual Backdraft on screen, flame-wise, I, I would uh, type in my notes, that's a Backdraft. <laughs> and uh, it happened quite a bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's... God, I just... The, I love how the fire is... Per, like, the fire is a character in this movie, and I kind of love that about it. I love that they make the fire scream and breathe and do all kinds of weird stuff. They uh, shot whatever you could see out of a fire. Any type of weird flame along the floor or, like, a backdraft. A backdraft, yeah. Titular backdraft. Magnesium. Oh. Trip the chloride. Better smell everything. Better smell it. Smell it, Bobby D. What is that? Of course, when you go into a fire scene, you're going to smell a bunch of things. Yeah, of course. That's the number one thing. That's 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 where Follow Your Nose comes from. There's a bunch of fire investigators. Do you think they have, like, a palate cleanser, like an abuse bouche like a onion in their pocket or something? Right, or like a jar of coffee beans, and they just smell those and then keep sniffing the fire for magnesium sulfate or whatever the hell they're smelling for. Jar of mayonnaise, lube up the <laughs> nostrils a bit. Yeah, lube up their, their crowbars and their knives. I um, loved how nobody gets dressed appropriately as a fireman during this whole movie. What do you mean? That's like Kurt Russell's whole thing is dressing appropriately. No way. He never does up his jacket. He never yeah. wears a mask. You're right. They don't even have uh, fireman pumps. Fireman what? Oh, the pumps. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I, yeah. Without a doubt, Kurt Russell is a bad firefighter in this movie. Like flat out bad. Should be fired from his job. Bad. Dang reckless. Literally gets a guy roasted alive because of how reckless he is. So I guess he's kind of the hero, kind of, but also should lose his job and then his life. <laughs> he definitely should be dead. This was a beautiful time in uh, the 80s uh, slash early 90s where yeah, your know. main character of an action movie had to be a divorced or widowed piece of crap. Of course. Just, Drunk, shitty. Just won't leave his family alone. Keeps pestering them. Keeps getting up on the roof. And they're like, get off down from the roof there, Kurt. And he's like, oh, I'm just drunk. I'm just pissed drunk. I, uh, I'm just drunk all the time. I'm a fireman. And their redeeming quality is supposed to be that they're good at their jobs, even though they're bad at life. But they're not. They're freaking wild cards that, like, somehow get the job done uh, while putting a lot of people at risk. Oh, yeah. And they have the worst district to, to work in. Like, District 17 that they're in, or Firehouse 17, whatever their, like, area that they cover is, is just always on fire. Like, they're just constantly dealing with fires. It's like, bro, calm down. And not little piss fires. These, well... There is a murderer uh, going around backdrafting a bunch of people. Oh. Um, so there's that. But also every other fire they go to, there is there is a backdraft that happens. Of course. Uh, and the building goes down usually. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a firefighter's dream is to have to fist fight a fire and a.k.a. their backdraft. Can you believe William Baldwin gets a big fire on his first day? Oh, I, I barely could. I couldn't believe it. I mean, bar kind of his first day. For, like, he gets He's late. He almost misses that first fire, that idiot. He's such an idiot. Uh, his car won't work, which I thought it was going to be revealed that his brother, like, effed with his car so he'd be late. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, yeah. Or something. Uh, but that doesn't happen. No. It's not kitschy enough. He's just a loser. William Baldwin is Big L in this movie. Mm -hmm. B big time. Is that time. why you hated it? Uh, no, I didn't hate Backdraft. I just was like, oh, I had I had expectations built out of nothing. <laughs> like, and then 
then this movie didn't meet my fake expectations. So I was disappointed by that because I made up a bunch of shit that isn't in the movie, evidently. Like Tom Berenger. I had big expectations, too. Based on, like, it's put on a pedestal as one of the best fireman uh, movies out there, I think. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, it's certainly on lists. I don't know if it's number one, but it's in top ten, certainly. It's certainly a, a fireman movie. It's definitely backdraft. Oh, it's definitely backdraft. <laughs> Uh, but I, I thought the flow of it was weird. It wanted to do everything all the other movies were doing at the time. I feel like there was probably a lot of uh, dicks in the kitchen on this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of dicks in the kitchen, as they say. As chefs say. Were you surprised uh, that Kurt Russell died twice in this movie? <laughs> That was the wildest moment to me. So, Kurt Russell is like that. We the movie opens, and Kurt Russell's a firefighter, and a, hey, hey, wow, well, we got a big uh, man. There, there it is. That's the that's what I knew they were in Chicago because when they pull up to the fire, Kurt Russell goes, "There it is," and then never speaks with a Chicago accent ever again, even when he's dying of fire. But you know, it's it's a flashback. He's got a mustache. And then he and then he brings his son to watch him fight a fire, and then his son watches him die in the fire, and then later on, he's just also playing his son. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, he's back! Oh no, wait, that's his that's his son. Oh weird, weird choice. The older son, not the one that uh, watches him die in right. the fire that he brought him to. That they had a lot of fun driving to. Oh my god, they had a great time driving to it. He was like, you want to you want to honk the horn, son? He's like, I yeah. guess. I don't know. I don't. I don't like this stuff. Wah. <laughs> but he I, dies, and it's funny. It's very funny. It's hilarious, actually, watching the kid go no, and then the photographer being like, "Click." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the photographer coming in right away was uh, very funny and invasive, and we're <laughs> like, "Okay, I get what this movie is about. It's actually about how writers and photographers are pieces of shit." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but no, it's about how firefighters are pieces of shit. Just kidding. They're the best. For a moment, did you think Kurt Russell was done with this film? Yeah, I thought he got, like, uh, Steven Seagal an Executive Decision, or whatever that movie's called. Maybe it's not Executive Decision. What, what, there's, a, there's a Charlie Sheen, Steven Seagal movie where Steven Seagal is, like, the main character at the start, and then he gets killed really early on. You're like, oh, damn, he's not in this movie. That's what I thought was happening with Kurt Russell. And then when he walks out of the fire later and is like, hey, what's going on, William Baldwin? I was like, wait, he's back? He's he's not dead? What the hell? I honestly thought he was the father a little bit, but then I you see the did. mustache is gone. Well, burned uh, off in the fire. His famous uh, Chicago accent is gone. I think that's what happens, is that it died with that generation. Right. Thank goodness. Yeah, it burned away the accent. <clears throat> hey, one for the Lord above. I gotta start giving it up to the Lord a little bit more during this podcast. Yeah. And if you're lur uh, lurving the life... Uh, right now, uh, give it up to the God one time. Hey, give it up to the God one. Give me one clap for the Lord. One clap. Slap, clap, God's a rap. Dead. <laughs> That's right. God's a rap, baby. He's toast. He's in the ground. It's time for Adam and Steve Creep to take the throne. That's right. God is eight feet under because six feet wasn't enough. You would have to probably, actually. At least. If we're being serious, like at least a couple more feet. Let's be very serious about this. If you're going to bury God alive, hopefully, uh, bury him eight feet deep. We don't even know what his dimensions are. Eight feet could just be his wing. Yeah, exactly. He might be laying on his back with a flagpole sticking up. Who knows? <laughs> might need a whole new planet to bury God. Hey, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, eight planets deep. Jupiter. Exactly. Jupiter, that bitch. Yeah. Uh, yes. Jupiter, that bitch. That bitch. That's Chicago, too. There's no deep dish pizza in this nope. movie. There's no hot dogs. Nope. Ballpark Franks. What else do uh, Chicago's eat? Jeez. Ass. Ass. Wind. There's a lot of ass. I mean, there is some ass in this movie. Did you think there was going to be penetration? Uh, I thought we might get a dong shot during that shower scene. And then I thought we were going to see Jennifer Jason Lee's yabos. And then uh, none of that happened. There was a very tasteful sex scene on top of a fire truck. 
<laughs> Very tasteful. Remember. I'm sure uh, there were a lot of uh, producers and uh, directors that were kind of around. Maybe like the grip was like, this is classy, Jennifer. We love it. Do it right. Put your yabos away. Quit trying to show them to all of us. The bra was off, though. Oh, yeah. The bra was off. The shirt was on, but the bra was off. Good luck figuring that one out. The the goal to leave as a fireman and then go back with your uh, new girlfriend, your little hot piece. Your slam piece, uh, yeah. Yeah, your slam piece. And then nail her on top of a truck. Hot. Yeah. That's fireman humor. Well, one thing that really stuck with me throughout this whole uh, movie is mm -hmm. how unbelievably hot William Baldwin is. Ah, uh, he's certainly wet and skinny, yeah. Well, the great thing about <laughs> uh, making a fireman movie is that you can go into that uh, boardroom office and say, <clears throat> these guys are going to be so wet. <laughs> hey, if you're a fireman, you're going to be drenched from head to toe every second of the day. Well, for the 24 hours on, 48 off, you're definitely going to be sweaty for some of that 24 hours. Oh, yeah, understandably. Of course you are. Are you jealous that uh, firemen get on-the-job training? Like, while they're at work, they can train if there's no fires. Yeah, I think that's great. That's that's how it should be. Yeah, they don't have to take up their 48 hours of me time. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It, I mean, it should be that should be the case for the police as well. All they're trained, uh, you know, on their work hours is how to shoot people. That's, that's the only thing they're trained to do is shoot people. So, you know, maybe they need less training and the firefighters need more. I don't know. Yeah, definitely give less training to the cops yeah. and more uh, training to the firemen. Exactly, yeah. Do you want to hear my first uh, five notes that I have written down for this movie? Uh, I'm going to guess the first one, and then I'll let you do your list. Let's hear it. All firemen should have guns. Uh, oh, damn. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, am I screen sharing right now? That's so weird that you knew that. Yes, all firefighters should have guns. All of them. Yeah. Big, big flamethrowers. Yeah, that shoot gun, that shoot bullets as well. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Flamethrower. The they got a big fire flamethrower, and then they also have a little gun on their hip that they can shoot people with. Yeah, gun on their hip. But they don't have. They just press a button and it comes off their hip. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like uh, Artemis Gordon in Wild Wild West. He's got that little uh, compact gun that comes out of his sleeve. Firemen were the first Artemis Gordons. Correct. Yeah, that's my second note. Now. Give me the list, baby. All right, we got Universal. They're in the business of firefighter movies. Backdraft and Faith Under Fire? They cornered the market. They love it. They love fire. They're sticky with it. Next note. Ron Howard, director of the Da Vinci trilogy? Oh, my God. Next note. William Baldwin, star of Christmas Switched? Next note. Hans Zimmer, music producer for the Da Vinci trilogy? This is the perfect movie for us. It was. It, it really got me hyped at the beginning. And yeah. the fire gets you right away. But I I felt Hans Zimmer's score for this was a little scory. I'm going to be honest. Uh, I don't think I like Hans Zimmer as a, as a like, scorist, as a music <laughs> man. I didn't, like... I've We've now watched a bunch of movies that have had a Hans Zimmer score in them. And I couldn't... I like none of it was memorable. None of it stuck. The only good thing Hans Zimmer's done is the Bois, and that's it. I couldn't. He's scored a lot of big movies. He's won Oscars for it, but I couldn't tell you one thing other than the Bois. Bois. Wow. Do you think it's because we're so used to having like modern songs in movies nowadays compared to scores like this? Like, there's. There's not one big rock opera song, is there, in this whole movie? Oh, see, I thought a lot of it was, like, licensed music. Like, they definitely play Heat Wave. Hans Zimmer didn't write Heat Wave, I'll tell you that much. On the way to their second fire, after the first Kurt Russell is dead, they're <laughs> yeah. on their way to uh, a fire, and they're having a ball. They're blasting heat wave so everybody around them can uh hear it it's a it's a bit disrespectful to the lives that are being lost in the fire yeah you're already blasting your sirens obnoxiously do you have to play heat wave by martha van and the vandals or whatever the hell they're called do you do you have to play that as well uh, okay i mean it's great i love the concept of a fire truck driving around playing heat wave that's pretty funny 
That's very funny, and I think they should definitely pick one or the other. Like, get Sirens mm-hmm. or Heat Wave, and it probably should be Heat Wave. But they should have, what they should have got was the song Fire by the OJs. That's the song they should have got. That's a way better song for firefighters to listen to. Did that come out? Yeah, that came out in like the 70s or something. That's an old, old song. That, you know that's You know the song Fire by the OJs. <laughs> Yeah, probably. If you I definitely know it. I'm not, not, not going to sing it. You'll definitely know it. I'm not going to put it in the episode because we're going to copyright strike. <laughs> <laughs> you know that place that we lived at together uh, and all the sirens that were would occur around that place? Yeah, that's because of uh, all the murders around where we lived. A lot of murders, but yeah. some fires maybe. Sometimes. Uh, it would have been really cool to hear, hear heat wave every single time instead of sirens. Oh, they, they, then you know, right? Like. Yeah. The, obviously, the, the police would have their own song that they would drive around with, and then, uh, I don't know, some something about being scared, something about, like, being cowards. I don't know, something like that. Then the firefighters would play Heat Wave, and that would be dope. And then the ambulance drivers would play, I don't know, some ambulance. I don't rescue know. Rescue 911. Yeah, the Rescue 911 theme. That's perfect. And then yeah. you know what's going by. You go, oh, that's firefighters, a Heat Wave. That makes sense. That make it a sense. A Heat Wave! <laughs> It really, it, my heart. it really reminded me of, like, Predator. Like, the, of the opening of Predator, where it was just like, oh, these are just, like, some guys having a good time. I hope they all have a great day, and everyone goes home safe. They get a 335 at the end of this, and I hope that they just have a great, great day. And some of them do. You don't have to be perfect until you're in the building with a fire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or a backdrop. Or a backdraft. Hey, did you notice that while Kurt Russell was dying the first time, none of the firefighters were paying attention? Yeah, nobody cared. Like they, the only person that saw anything was the little kid. Was his son, yeah. He like yeah. hauled he they hauled a kid out of the building and then sent them down, and then all the firefighters are like celebrating and like comforting the family, and it's like, hey, this place is still on fire and there's still firefighters in there. Do your job in nineteen seventy one. How about that? The problem is, is that they didn't think about fire being in walls yet. I mean, it'd been hundreds of years of walls, but <laughs> they didn't figure it out yet. Hey, it's been hundreds of years of walls. What are you doing? Hey! Hey, I'm Chicago here. Hey, I'm Chicago here. I would have loved one deep dish pizza. <laughs> right? Why didn't that happen? Why weren't they like, hey, why you bald? Why don't you go get us a deep dish pizza? Manja Maro. Oh, Maron. That was basically this movie. This movie was basically just... They should have just called this movie Marone. <laughs> Did you at any point think that Robert De Niro was the one who was uh, killing people with backdrafts? Uh, no, but I did think Kurt Russell was it for a while. Definitely at the end, they paint a beautiful picture of uh, Kurt Russell because William Baldwin becomes the investigator, helps out Robert De Niro, try to figure out who's killing all these people Mm -hmm. with backdrafts. Exactly. Because it's very efficient. Oh, doesn't burn the rest of the building down. It just kills the people with a backdraft. Thank God. Oh, thank you, God. And then the backdraft's so so strong, it snuffs the fire out. Yeah. The backdraft's so strong. The thing is, nobody thought to make backdraft so strong. Right. They thought backdraft weak, but backdraft so strong. Burn burn up all the oxygen. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah backdraft weak. You open the door, it backdrafts a little. Nobody's hurt. Mm-hmm. But this backdraft, big. You kick open door, backdraft suck all air out, then <laughs> big, big flame. Yeah, big death. And you know it's you know there's a backdrop behind that door because a the door is bulging at the hinges and b you see the smoke go and suck back up under the door for no reason. Why did it? Why did that happen? Every single fire trick they could think of, uh, they put in this movie. They wanted to really accentuate the fire as a character. Oh yeah, and Chicago as a character, of course. Of course, Chicago is obviously the fifth member of uh, Sex in the City. No pizza. <laughs> no pizza. Hey, no pizza. No Michael Jordan cameo. No Dicka. No none of that stuff. <laughs> no Dicka. You're right. That's right. Yeah. You know who was in this movie, though? Did you see dead David Crosby at the start of this movie? From Stills and Nash? Yeah. Uh, from hell now. But yeah, from Stills and Nash before. You think he went to heck? I, I think everyone who dies goes to hell. Of course. Yeah, in yeah. this economy? Forget about it. Oh, my God. That's something I... Ah! The other day I was in town, 
And there was this woman, like, yelling at people on the street. Just, like, yelling and screaming. Clearly, like, in mental duress. Wasn't well. Nobody cared. Uh, but at one point, I heard her yell, and I... I <laughs> this is the quote, and I'll have to censor it. She went, You wanna fuck with me? In this economy? And I went, <laughs> You are my wife. Please marry me. This is good. This is a thruple <laughs> happening, maybe. Yeah. I was in love instantly. Yeah, why cut loose and marry a new one when you can have your uh, two eggs for free? Exactly. Hey, pff, why buy the chicken when I can get the eggs for free? And that's huge now because of the bird flu. Exactly. Yeah, that's why a carton of eggs is 13 effing dollars here in Haiti. I wish we all had our own chickens. They're I'm working small, on it. They're portable. Yeah, yeah, they just keep ovulating. Yeah, you could freeze them and then unfreeze them, and they're still alive sometimes. Yeah, and you still and you get those fresh eggs. Have you ever frozen a live chicken? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that you would ask that because actually, yes, of course I have, just for fun. Yeah, of course, in Haiti, you got to do it. What else are you gonna do? We don't have the internet here. We don't know how to can vegetables. No. <laughs> <laughs> we freeze a live chicken. Freeze a live chicken. They sustain us. <laughs> Haiti, baby. Uh, did you like the moment when the firefighters get to the fire and the cops are there and the firefighter walks by and goes, you guys are standing around with your thumb up your ass? And I was like, oh, I love that the firefighters hate the cops in this. Yeah, you knew they were trash back in 91, firefighters. We love you. You gotta out alpha these frickers. Yeah, of course. These fake frickers. These scared children with guns. Tough guys. Cowards. Give the guns to the firemen, and then we'll see what's what. That's Game's the heroes. Gone. Exactly, yeah. There was a headline I saw the other day, because there's all those, like, riots and or, like, protests in France, and the, the there was a headline that I saw that said, firefighters light themselves on fire and then go fight the police. And I was like, that's the coolest thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, it's like uh, putting grease on your sword and lighting it on fire. Hell yeah, it is. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's what they did with their lives. Yeah. Hey, you said that Hans Zimmer did music in this movie, but I'll tell you another song he didn't do. Sunshine of Your Love by Cream. He didn't do War by... War. Who the hell wrote War? Uh, oh, I knew his Warlords? name at one time. No, uh, it's, it's like some weird name, like Genghis Khan or something. No, it's like something Star. Like Martin Star, I think. <laughs> I think Martin Ma Star. I think it was Martin Star, yeah. No, it's it's a guy's name. I can't remember what the hell his name is. It doesn't matter. He did War. Ugh. He didn't do eight tracks. He didn't. Hans Zimmer didn't write eight tracks. Good God, y'all. See, this movie started, and I was very excited. I liked the tone of it. I liked that Kurt Russell was killed in front of his son. All that stuff I enjoyed. But then it said directed by Ron Howard, and I was like, oh, this isn't going to be Roadhouse with Firefighters. This is going to be a C plus. So I already had my expectations tempered immediately. Yeah. It went soft. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because hey, speaking of going soft. In this movie, they talk about, like, Robert De Niro plays the fire inspector, and he's, like, the cool... Everyone loves him. They're like, this is the coolest guy around. He goes and figures out why the fire started. And fire inspectors are, are portrayed as, like, cool... The coolest of the cool when it comes to firefighters. But I used to know a fire inspector, and he was a limp cuck. And I couldn't stay. He was a big loser. So I don't know what changed in since 91, but fire inspectors are not cool anymore. They're a bunch of effing losers now. I think that speaks to uh, Robert De Niro's scent as a man um, because he takes a role that could be a beta cock, a loser, yeah. um, sniffing all this stuff, looking like a turd, nerd. Turd nerd. Much. Um, but he, he elevates it into a man that goes to uh, the cafe every day, orders a black coffee, and then puts a little Irish cream in there. Oh, a lot of Irish cream. Like, not even cream, but just Irish whiskey. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, he just drinks a cup of Baileys every morning and goes, that's good coffee. And they go, well, mm. you, you drink your Baileys hot? I don't I guess. Yeah, that that's sounds good. Does it? I've never drank Baileys in my life. That's good. It's a cream liqueur. Yeah, it, it doesn't uh, go down easy, though. You really got to swallow hard. <laughs> <laughs> But it's hard to swallow, too, when your body's covered in third-degree burns. Isn't that right, Bobby De Niro? Well, yes. <laughs> he does get burned alive uh, and survives the tale, mm -hmm. which is really good, and I'm glad they included that into the movie. You know what else is really good and I'm glad they included in the movie? Donald Sutherland playing, like, 
I don't like a Hannibal Lecter type character for no reason. Like the Hannibal Lecter of arsonists that they're like, we need your help trying to catch this arsonist. <laughs> Why? Why is he in this? Take this movie's two and a half hours long. Trim out 40 minutes from the start of the movie. Get rid of Donald Sutherland and just let's go. Move it on, Ron Howard. They're, they're just channeling all these tropes of a famous movie. you got to have, like, an old, creepy criminal um, steering the ship, <laughs> yeah. I guess. Yeah. And figuring out the crime way before the uh, investigator does. Yeah, like, based on, like, being in jail and then seeing some pictures and write-ups based on things that people have, like, p- things that people have written and going, oh, obviously it's Kurt Russell doing it. <laughs> yeah, you figure out it's Kurt Russell, and then you get shanked. I love that he figures out, like, the, the Donald Sutherland's like, it was Kurt Russell who's making these fires. He says it to William Baldwin, and William Baldwin's like, oh my god, like, I have to go arrest my brother. Instead of being like, well, maybe this criminal who is insane is lying to me. <laughs> Instead he just goes, that's gospel, that's my brother. <laughs> He is right for a moment. It is a firefighter, but not the one you expect oh. or the one you would expect because he's got scars all over him and is creepy and is the minor character in the movie. Uh, so definitely should have saw that one coming. Yeah, it should have been the kid who got all backdrafted, Tim. <laughs> yeah, it should have been William Baldwin. No, oh, that have been what a twist that would have been if you'd just been like, hey, guess what? You were wrong. Oh, you were right about it being a firefighter. And then he pulls out his firefighter's gun and shoots Donald Sutherland and goes, but it was me. If it was made today, it probably would have been like the ghost of uh, dead Kurt Russell that came back as a fire Mm -hmm. and started backdrafting all the people who killed him. Oh, that would be awesome. Backdraft with a vengeance. Yeah, ghost backdraft. Love it. Did you know they made a backdraft too? I do. 2019. I'm really curious as to the quality bad it will be it'll be bad it's a William Baldwin movie in 2019 it will be bad 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 also Donald Sutherland is back in it for some reason backdraft he's backdrafted in it (laughs) isn't he dead Donald Sutherland yeah in the in the universe of backdraft I don't know I haven't seen backdraft too but at the end of this movie he's still alive (laughs) what about in our universe Mm, I don't know yeah I think I think he's alive I think he's okay Because he was really old in this movie. Well, I got news for you. He's even older now. (laughs) If he's not dead. Well, you're talking about Kiefer Sutherland's dad? Kiefer himself? No, he's definitely still alive. I'm looking it up and seeing if he's dead, and it looks like he is dead. No, he's not. He's alive. In a word, Brian, what is this job all about? Fire. Good. Good lesson, I guess. It is. I guess. He's telling the truth. Yeah. Although it's kind of crazy nowadays. Everybody's trying to squeeze the working class. And now firefighters have to be police and <laughs> first responders. Daycare nurses. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Our swipers. They got to do everything. Yeah, they're wiping everything. True. God, I'd love to be a fireman. God damn. I missed my calling. Should have been a buff fireman. The problem is you got to, like, go to fire wrecks sometimes. And I don't want to do that. No. I want to fight fires. Yeah. Like you'd have to go to Chicago or New oh. York or something and to fight fires every day. Yeah, I want to grab a fire by the throat and go, you son of a bitch. I want to <laughs> scream that at the fire while I'm fighting it. In Haiti, you got to do it all. Yeah, it's called fire fighting, not fire dealing with. You yeah, it's fist- fire person. Yeah, it's fireproofmymarriagepleasecom you put on your asbestos laced brass knuckles and you fist fight that fire until one of you goes down as best as you can hey, oh beautiful it's kind of crazy they don't mention asbestos at all during this movie <laughs> that is kind of crazy well, just wild like asbestos was g- running rampant at that time yeah why didn't William Baldwin go hey are these jackets made of asbestos certainly wasn't his pants because they're wearing jeans the whole movie (laughs) and like pants rolled down over their boots it's a weird look for them it's sexy but it doesn't seem practical they wanted to make these firemen very sexy so that meant that kurt russell could not put a mask on yeah how did he how did he get away with that like that's a thing that he's known for amongst the firefighters like oh kurt russell no he doesn't wear a mask when he goes and fights fires well that's stupid and dangerous and we'll kill him that seemed to be badass. Like, he's adapted and he's so good at his job that he doesn't eat. 
even need the safety equipment. But we found out through rigorous scientific testing that your lungs just get worse. Yeah. They don't adapt. They're just getting worse and worse, they're, and you will die an early death. Yeah, they're just getting filled with goop. Yeah. You will get cancer at 42. Yeah. Old age cancer. Not unless you get killed in a fire first. And that's the plan of all firefighters. Uh, yeah, you're right. Get divorced. Get Be a piece of crap so your wife divorces you. Mm-hmm. Try to get and... back into her life, trick her into having sex with you because you're just you're sad. And then the next morning, pretend like your marriage is fixed. And she goes, no, it's not. Get out of my house. And you go, what about my son? What you don't see is the scene where he chloroforms his wife before that interaction. So she's all hazy that... when uh, she sleeps with him. That interaction is very weird. Like it goes and unnecessary. Yeah, very unnecessary. I don't want to see Kurt Russell having sex with his socks on. Ugh. They should make a movie where it's just firehouse and then fires. I don't want to hear about family. Some of these firefighters got to be single. Show me their story. Yeah. Cousins. Stripping on the side, maybe. Cool. Well, they should have a movie called Stripping on the Side. Stripping on the Side, maybe. Yeah, maybe. The backdraft story. Chocolate City 4, Stripping on the Side, colon, maybe. Well, we're definitely going to get another uh, Chocolate City because there's another Magic Mike. That's true. Oh, hey, that's coming out soon. Oh, my God, that's coming out. Oh, wow. It's it, When this comes out, it's already out, and we've already seen it and put out our special episode about it. We're preparing. Are you going to see it on Valentine's Day with your beautiful wife? Uh, is it out Valentine's Day? Is that the whole thing? I think it does come out Valentine's oh, Day. Yeah. so gross, and I love it. Yeah, I'm definitely going <laughs> to. a pretzel dog and watch some dongs. <laughs> Well, I, I won't be. I have to work, so I won't be going on Valentine's Day. But I'll try to go as soon as I can. Uh, and I love you for that. <laughs> uh, so why why is Swayzeak not Patrick Swayze, but Swayzeak playing a guy named Axe? Uh, why is he burning up all these buildings? Why is he backdrafting? He is backdrafting them so he can make money. <laughs> no, well, sure, why not? Yeah, he's killing uh, a bunch of uh, firehouses so that he can have a bigger pay, um, and that's it. <laughs> well, none of that's correct, but... That is the whole thing. <laughs> no, it's not. That's you, you have all the right elements in all the wrong order. I disagree. Tell me what the story is, then. The mayor is shutting down firehouses so they can be converted into community centers that a business that he's a part of is then getting the contracts for. So the yeah. mayor and all of his buddies are double-dipping, essentially, and getting all that sweet city money. But in turn, because of that, they're closing down firehouses, which means that firefighters are dying in fires because there's no backup. So Isaac's not burning down buildings to make money. He's burning down buildings to stop the mayor or to kill the people who are working with the mayor to shut down the firehouses. That's why he's doing it as revenge. Well, that's why he's backdrafting. So he's backdrafting, yeah. Revenge. But Swayzeak's the the suit. He's the guy making all the money. No, he's not. Swayzeak's yeah. acts. No. Yeah, the mayor is a different Swa guy. Swayzeak is the guy that hired William Baldwin. That's Robert De Niro. <laughs> no, he's the one that he works with. But he Swayzeak's the guy who hires him to work with De Niro. The suit. No, because they keep calling Axe Swayzeak in the final scene. They keep going like, yeah, you, me, get Swayzeak out of here. <laughs> I'm going to look up backdraft. Look it up. More like front draft. Hey, look it up. Look her up. And I'm going to prove to you that... Prove to me. The information you have is rock solid. Pro prove to me. Um, but I want to prove you wrong. Yeah, the, the killer wrong. is named John Adox. His name is John Swayzeak. <laughs> and the suit, played by J.T. Walsh, you right. Big nerd. The great. Uh, is Marty Swayzeak. Ooh. All right. I guess you were right. My apologies. You were Swayzeak. right. I'm sorry. You were right. I was wrong. And uh, you're right. <laughs> it was also definitely needed to be left into this because it's an argument that goes nowhere. <laughs> it's an argument that proves that I was wrong. I was a horse's ass. So we are leaving it in because I need to be taken down a peg or two. Oh, uh, definitely a peg or two. Oh yeah. Hey, did you like that? Uh, did you like that 
candid shot they got of William Baldwin responding to the question, why did you go to Hollywood to become an actor? Do what? Know, do you know what he said? What? He said, I'm going for the hose. <laughs> Classic William humor. That William is a classy guy. He's good at things. He's classy and ashy in this movie. I I felt like he could have been the next Tom Cruise in this movie. He was looking so buttery sexy. It's weird watching this movie and going like, oh, only William Baldwin didn't get a career out of this, huh? Everyone else got a better career. Like, I look and I go, oh, Kurt Russell. Well, sure, Kurt Russell's a classic. Jennifer Jason Lee making great movies now. Donald Sutherland escaping the clutches of the Grim Reaper at every turn. And William Baldwin, star of Christmas Switched. Good for him. Despite what Ron Howard put his greasy fingers on, these guys shined. Oh, yeah. Shine as if they were slicked up with grease. <laughs> Who do you think was the grease guy on this film? I don't know. But it was interesting listening to, like, when you really listen to, like, the people talking in the crowd scenes, there's a lot of audio of people going, it's colored grease. It's colored grease. <laughs> this guy knows colored grease. This guy loves colored grease. Well, our listeners obviously know what colored grease is. And it's funny. It is funny. And not offensive. No, it's colored grease. How could that be offensive? It's not. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, do you like how they figure out what's going on? They figure out that Swayzeak's setting these fires, and they figure all that stuff out, and then they just at the end decide, we're not going to tell Robert De Niro about it, though. Like, we'll just nah. we'll keep it to ourselves. Well, Robert De Niro gets impaled uh, in the shoulder and then just kind of fades out of the movie for a bit. <laughs> yeah, and then comes back at the end to do something. When did he get It was in... Swayzeak! Ah, Swayzeak, you're going to jail, bud! <laughs> well, they should have killed him ritually. We should definitely hang people in uh, centers. Oh, well, wow, that's really dark. And I, uh... <laughs> well, great. You know, I take it back. You know what I really liked? During Kurt Russell's funeral, it looks like the fire trucks are painted black and chrome. And I was like, that's the dopest look for a fire truck I can imagine. Red is nice. That's nice for children. But this is 2023. Our fire trucks should be black and chrome and cool. Decked out. They should definitely be cool. Change the horns to very modern music. And yeah. uh, go black, chrome. Who cares? Nobody needs to see you on the road. You're loud and lighted enough. Yeah, you're loud and proud. Just get it out there. Play your heat wave, drive around, and people will know. They needed to be red in, like, the 1920s when yeah. they were being drawn by horses. Yeah, they needed to be red in the 1920s when red was just invented. <laughs> they just invented red. Uh, they found the berries. Mm -hmm. The right berries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not the wrong ones. The red ones. But uh, I don't know. This movie ends with, like, firefighters arguing in a fire. No, they they substitute the axe fight. See, this is this is how I knew it was a Ron Howard movie, is you thought, oh, it's going to be a sweet axe fight, and then they just talk, and you go like, ah. Oh. I don't think I like Ron Howard as a director. I don't think I like Ron Howard movies. I think I, I, I can think of five Ron Howard movies off the top of my head, and all of them I'd go, yeah, they're all kind of meh. Yeah, I... He's lauded as, like, a really big director and stuff, but it's just yeah. kind of, like, milk toast, like you said earlier. It just, it goes over your palate. You you get what I guess you should expect, which is just kind of a whatever movie with a lot of stars and uh, yeah. you know, flash. Money. But no cash. No. I mean, he's he makes movies that you can watch with your grandma, and she'll go, that was an okay movie. Yeah, your mom or your uncle or, like, your cousin. Yeah, or your sister or your uncle or your cousin. Yeah. On Christmas Day, your uncle walks up to you and pushes you into the tree and <laughs> says, hey, do you want to watch Backdraft? Hey, do you want to watch right. Inferno? And you go, not really. <laughs> no, please. No. I'm going to just say no, uncle. No, I don't want to watch Inferno. No. No, Inferno, you gotta watch. Oh, you gotta watch Inferno. Oh, yeah, yeah. What about Back to Back? Sure. Side by side. Well, you'll be disappointed because you'll go, oh, are these both about fire? And then one of them is and one of them isn't. Well, somebody gets lit on fire in Inferno, right? Uh, the Bible? The Bible gets lit on fire, yeah. 
Yeah, metaphorically. Metaphorically. Well, there's a lot of... Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember. But I, I will say, for as boring of a director as Ron Howard is, the shots of, like, the firefighters in that burning building at the end are incredible. And, like, so much real fire. This is before CGI. So it's just, like... When you see a man run through a fireball, they had a real man run through a real fireball. That's so cool. It's very impressive uh, and very fun to watch. They should come out with a fire cut of this movie and just whittle it down to the most necessary scenes in the fire because it is like legitimately beautiful what they pull off with the special effects in this movie, oh, which yeah. are all real effects. Yeah, loved it. Did you ever go to Universal Studios and see the backdraft ride? No, I, I when I went there, it, it was long closed. I think Minions replaced it, which like, Jesus Christ. Talk about a downgrade, a video Minions ride over real fire in a real building. Yawn. Oh, I could go off on the minions. They're just taking over everything. Pizza parlors, park rides. What's yeah. next? Facebook. I hope so. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, they should minion the moon. They should minion sure. the moon. Moonion. Moonion. Do you think you put one eye on them or like two eyes? Is Moonion better than Minion? <laughs> <laughs> That's tough. That's really tough. I think they pay a lot of people a lot of money to figure those things out. <laughs> that's that's the question for the ages. Yeah. We come up with the questions. Other people, will, the scientists can come up with the answers. Exactly. It's not up to us to tell the eggheads at NASA how to do their job. Yeah. I propose that the Earth's only 200 years old. You tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> you tell me if it's Moonians or Minions. <laughs> That's tough. I'm glad you put those both together. I thought you were going to, you know, wibble on the last one, but you <laughs> you pulled her through. Slam dunked it, minion style. Yeah. Slip it and ride it. Hey, Steve, I got a question for you. Yeah. And that is, of course, uh, can firefighters eat pork? <laughs> can firefighters eat pork? That is a different, because not all, or are all firefighters Christian. <laughs> Yeah, well, of course. All <laughs> firefighters are Christian, of course. That's a part of yeah. requirements to be a firefighter. You can't it's fit something a... in the creepy eye of the fire that turns you into a Christian. Well, and you can't wear a yarmulke under a fireman's helmet. That's that's that doesn't work. So you have to be a Christian. Yeah, how are you supposed to wear the headdress of your people, whatever religion it is? Sure. Um, when you have a fireman's helmet on, yeah, you can't... unless you're Kurt Russell that could take it off at any time yeah. because he's a man. Yeah, exactly. He, he's so concerned about his brother doing his jacket up properly, but never, never even does up his jacket once. Just lets it hang open, fill it full of fire. Now that would be really cool if it turned out that Kurt Russell was a Jewish uh, firefighter. <laughs> <laughs> the first time he takes off his helmet, he goes, "Ooh, watch my yarmulke." Uh. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's good. That's good writing. Yeah, fireproofmyamakaplease.com. Out, out of all the things we've said on the podcast, I think we're going to hell for that one. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's the <laughs> one that tipped the scales. Fireproofmyamaka.com. Yeah. Fireproofmyamaka, please. I said some terrible things in this podcast, but that's the one. I mean, the, the worst thing you did in this podcast was prove me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Provemymarriagewrong.com. <laughs> Prove my marriage wrong, please. dot com. Right. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. I wonder if you can get both. Dot, can you get dot please? <laughs> That's what I would like. Say, if I prove my marriage, dot please is the perfect website. Uh, yeah, I think that could overtake dot com. To be honest, is dot please. Dot please. Yeah. Well, you want to be polite to you Google. Like, there's been some funny ones out there, like dot .tv, that's hilarious. Oh, yuck up, right? Dot, uh, I don't know, dot .co, Squish. dot .uk, <laughs> dot .au. <laughs> but that is the perfect, uh, perfect word for uh, a new one. Right. You know what? As soon as we're done, I'm going to go on uh, GoDaddy and, and look up fireproofmymarriage.please and see if I can get a dot .please. And if uh, I... would email GoDaddy first and propose that they give you a million dollars for this idea. <laughs> well, the first thing I'm going to do is look up fireproofmymarriagepleasecom and see if I can get that. And if I yeah. can't get that, then I'll look up fireproofmymarriage.please and we'll see if we can get that. Easy. Yeah. But hey, can firefighters eat pork? 
Uh, inconclusive. <laughs> <laughs> now, Adam, yeah? I have a question for you, actually. Can Christians eat pork? Oh, wow. Well, thank you so much for asking. Uh, according to this movie, inconclusive. Uh, we don't know. I mean, obviously, they're all Christian because they're firefighters. And the reason why only Christians can be firefighters is because they believe in hell and fire is an embodiment of hell. So they're literally fighting the devil every time they go because you th- smoked a cigarette in bed or whatever. The new headdress uh, for Christians should be a tiny fireman's helmet. <laughs> like the like pope, cloth. The Pope should wear a cloth fireman's helmet. <laughs> yeah. And every Christian that goes to church. Of course. Of course goes to church. Like, come up with something cool, guys. Yeah. Your church is failing. People don't care about it anymore. Do something cool. Incorporate cool firefighters in it. Get a new hat. Get a new hat, Pope. <laughs> Idiots. Idiots. Well, inconclusive. Uh, backdraft. Uh, Hero Month is going great so far. Yeah, I, I'm really stewing in it. I uh, I feel like I'm in a big stew of fire. And I, we're going to cream next week because if you want to talk about Hero Month, I can't think of a more heroic movie to end Hero Month on. And I'm just so excited to get to it. But that's for next week. Yeah, it might be the biggest heroic event in human history that uh, this movie steeps itself in. And I would hope you would never forget it. Yeah, steep your tea out there for longer than a minute. That's right. Don't smoke in bed, stupid. Unless how, it's vaping. How adi- cool. But how addicted are you to cigarettes? You're smoking in bed. What a loser. We didn't talk about it at all, but there is some very aggressive smoking throughout this whole movie. Like, there's just people smoking everywhere where you don't need it in a film. Bro, it's my favorite thing about all the firefighters in this movie is they put out a fire and then light a cigarette, and all of them are just ripping darts and digging through the ashes and smoking darts and just like... And like Kurt Russell's like drinking after a fire one time. He's just drinking a can of beer, and I'm like, God, being a firefighter in the 90s looks awesome <laughs> I I think it speaks more to the propaganda machine that Hollywood is uh, for smoking yeah no, um, did but I say, also what you said did I say being a firefighter I meant smoking darts in the 90s looks awesome true enough I I want to go back to that life but uh, my fingies hurt <laughs> Well, <laughs> my nerves were shot of course yeah because <laughs> you fell and got impaled by a yeah, rebar smoking Rebar. Hey, uh, until next week, Steve Creep, I love you. I love you. We We love love you, you, please. please. Fire rules. Fire does rule. Fire rules. Uh, How did we not talk about that? Uh, I don't know. Fire rules, but it also hates. I'm Chism. I'm Chism. Chism. I'm Chism. I'm Chism. Bro, fire rules. I'm Chism. I'm Chism. Spirals! Again.